Welcome to Vintage Auto Docs. Get ready to take a trip back in time as we explore a treasure trove of dealer brochures, newspaper ads, and other automotive memorabilia from yesteryear. Join us as we delve into the fascinating backstories behind these vintage documents, giving you a glimpse into what it was like to be a car enthusiast in the past. Your host is Bob Doring, the curator of the Vintage Auto Docs collection, and he can't wait to share these incredible pieces of automotive history with you. Get ready to rev your engines and step into a world of automotive nostalgia. Hi there, I'm Bob Doring, curator of the Vintage Auto Docs collection. In this episode, we uncover a gem, an ad from 1968 featuring the Pontiac Bonneville. We'll analyze it first before delving into some of the fascinating stories behind its creation and the backstories behind the card depicts. Join me as I take you through both aspects in detail. Let's get started. Here is the ad as we retrieve it from the Vintage Autodox collection. Let's adjust it with our time machine to bring it back to its original glory. Imagine turning a page in a magazine and coming across this beauty. The copy at the top of the ad tells the whole story. And all along you thought you had to forsake wide tracking when you moved up to a luxury car. We have no idea how this misconception ever got off the ground. For, as you can observe below, Bonneville isn't just another fantastic Pontiac. It begins with a long, lean body poised on the biggest wheelbase we make, 124 inches. Inside, you're greeted by the opulence of nylon blend broadloom that extends door to door and then some. Generous swathes of simulated burl grained Carpathian elm abound on doors and dash, and upholstery is no less fine. Everything from exquisite cloth and supple morokide to all morokide. And if you're the kind who requires even more pampering, there's our brome option. It includes extra touches of luxury like rich cloth upholstery so stately you may not want to be seated. Bonville a luxury car? Definitely. Wide track? The widest. So who says wide tracking has to end when you're ready to move up? When your time comes, see your Pontiac dealer. At the bottom of the ad, it simply states wide track 1968 Pontiacs. Let's go back to 1968 and see just what this car really had to offer. In an article by James Krause, he explains how during the 1960s, Pontiac brochures and advertising were transformed by vivid illustrations created by Art Fitz Fitzpatrick and Van Kaufman. These lush images depicted scenes of glamorous sophistication, populated with suave, well-dressed cosmopolitan characters, accompanied always by an oversized, shimmering, chrome-plated car that glistened under bright light. The team brought life to these fantastical scenarios through their artwork, making them seem almost real enough for anyone to reach out and touch. It was a time when automobiles became more than just transportation, but also symbols of status and luxury, thanks in part to this dynamic duo behind some truly iconic imagery from one of America's most beloved brands. The images showcased by Pontiac stirred up fantasies for aspirational car buyers who dreamed of being part of this stunning and unfamiliar world. These visuals nourished the belief that they, too, could gain entry into it if only they bought a new Pontiac model. Fitz and Van were undoubtedly the most revered practitioners of illustrative automotive advertising during their time. They began working together for Mercury and Buick before finding success at Pontiac, where they collaborated on countless campaigns over a decade-plus period. Fitz would choose overall layouts while adding intricate details to each car. Meanwhile, Van brought life into characters and settings with his creativity. Fitz was a true master at capturing color and reflecting it through his artistry. He utilized Pontiac's 1960s magic mirror and fire-leveled acrylic lacquer paint finishes to create some truly remarkable pieces of work that seemed almost otherworldly in their beauty. The way he manipulated the colors made them appear as though they were being reflected off an endless array of hues, while still maintaining a deep glossy shine thanks to multiple layers of clear coat applied over top. The car's aesthetics were further enhanced by eliminating shut lines and leaving off trim screws, antennas, bumper bolts, as well as other unnecessary details. The detailing of these vehicles was exceptional. The story of how Fitz and Van collect background images is truly captivating. Each year, they would travel to exotic locations around the world in search for potential backdrops 
from Rome to Paris, Monte Carlo all the way down south to Hawaii or Puerto Rico. No stone was left unturned. This process not only allowed them access into some of the most luxurious places on Earth, but also gave birth to an adventure that will leave anyone feeling inspired by their journey. Fitz and Van had complete control over their creative process when it came to depicting car models for Pontiac headquarters. They would carefully select backgrounds that complemented the colors of each available trim level before choosing which shades worked best with locales they were painting. The finalized images were then sent to Pontiac's ad agency, McManus, John, and Adams for the copywriters to add suitable text and a complimentary headline. This completed the process of creating an effective advertisement that would grab viewers' attention. With their expertise in crafting compelling messages with impactful visuals, they ensured that Pontiac had yet another successful campaign. Pontiac's advertising illustrations were instrumental in propelling the brand from sixth to third place in U.S. sales by 1962, outperforming other mass market lines like Chevrolet and Ford. The success of these campaigns helped maintain Pontiac's position as a top seller throughout the rest of the decade. With their creative approach, they proved that innovation can lead to significant growth even within highly competitive markets. What do you think of the Fitz and Van style ads? Do they invoke a feel of the 1960s to you? Let us know down in the comments. In 1967, Pontiac introduced a design for their Bonneville model that incorporated elements from the rear of the 1966 model. This gave it a somewhat odd appearance. This was eliminated as a part of the minor facelifting in 68, when Catalina's and other full-size models received similar updates with a beak-like grille, horizontal headlights, and block lettering on both front wheel openings, as well as deck lid latch panel. The taillights were also updated to feature longer lenses than those used previously, but remained consistent across all models, including executives and Catalinas. This unique approach resulted in a distinctive look that set apart Pontiacs from competitors during these years. The Bonnevilles were designed to be luxurious vehicles with all executive features, plus additional amenities such as fender skirts, carpeted lower door trim, and Elm Burl vinyl dash trim. For those who wanted even more luxury from their vehicle, there was also an option for upgrading to the Bonneville Brome trim package, which included front foam cushions, spare tire cover, power windows, and strato bench seat. These additions helped make driving this iconic car feel like pure indulgence. In 1968, engine offerings remained largely unchanged from the previous year, with only slight adjustments made to horsepower ratings. The standard four-barrel 400 had a revised rating of 340, while both versions of the 428 saw theirs increase slightly, up to 375 for the standard model and 390 for the higher compression HO variant. Meanwhile, safety continued to be prioritized as new fender side marker lights became mandatory on all cars built after January 1st that same year. Additionally, front outboard shoulder belts were added as standard equipment in vehicles produced later during this period. The Bonneville was available in five different body styles, including four-door hardtops, four-door sedans, two-door hardtops, two-door convertibles, and four-door station wagons. An interesting fact is that there were only nine station wagons produced with manual transmissions. You might think that someone customized their Bonneville with a Grand Prix concealed headlights grille, but in May 1968, Pontiac introduced the look as an option for all Bonneville models. Some special duty models were created, such as this rare 1968 Pontiac Bonneville Ambulance that served at Phoenix International Raceway in Arizona. It transported famous drivers after various stunts on the oval track. It's now half a century old, but still holds its place in motorsport history. The Pontiac Ambulance is particularly impressive with its raised roof adorned in warning lights that signal its presence from afar. Power comes courtesy of an incredibly powerful Vate engine paired with automatic transmission technology. This particular model has only clocked up around 22,688 miles since new, which makes it highly desirable for collectors or anyone looking for something truly unique. What do you think of the style of the 1968 Bonneville? Do you have any experiences with one? Were you one of the lucky ones to drive a 1968 Bonneville with a 428 high output engine? Drop us a comment below.
Thank you for joining us for this episode of Vintage Auto Docs. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notification of future episodes. This show is inspired by the lifelong collection of vintage auto docs of the late Bill McConkie, a World War II veteran from Cambridge, Ohio. We are grateful beyond measure for his efforts at preserving history through these documents. Join us again soon, as we continue exploring this fascinating topic together. As you journey forward, don't forget, from time to time, to glance back at the rearview mirror. Enjoy the experiences of yesteryear, and have an amazing trip ahead.